the muzzleloaders.com podcast, your source for all things muzzleloading. All right, welcome back to the Muzzleloaders podcast. Uh, thank you for joining us today. We're very excited. We have a new guest on. Uh, it's Verlin Savage. So Verlin is Nate's dad. I'm sure you're familiar with Nate. Uh, he's been on a few podcasts now. And uh, we're going to be talking about elk hunting specifically and just mainly swapping stories this podcast. So excited to uh, really just sit down and, and talk about hunting for an hour. So <laughs> it'll be lots of fun. Um, if but, we can hold it to an hour. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it might go longer than that. Um, but Verlon, I wanted to just kind of introduce you. Um, you've obviously been on uh, pro staff with several different companies. You're primarily a bow hunter, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. And so, you know, S2 Calls, Nikon, Prime, um, and then some other places as well. You've been on pro staff. But uh, just wanted to kind of talk about your experience with hunting. Like, where did it all begin? And, uh, you know, how did, how did you kind of get to where you are today as far as elk hunting goes? Well, I think, you know, going way back, I mean, way back in the day, back in the 1900s, <laughs> uh, you know, it seems like such a long time ago now. Um, but uh, really, um, with my dad, my dad was a um, guide for several years, and he uh, always always took us hunting. And he loved his his passion was hunting. He loved to hunt, and uh, so we we always always went hunting. Um, so I always tried to follow my dad's footprints in the snow, you know, and because we rifle hunted in, in Wyoming. I was born and raised in Wyoming. So we rifle hunted and not really much archery, uh, stuff until I was in my teen years. But, um, it was kind of a different, a different era back then, because if you, if you wanted to archery hunt, you could archery hunt. And then if you didn't get one, you just go a rifle hunt and go mm-hmm. get one with a rifle or whatever. But, uh, really cutting my teeth on elk hunting was just trying to follow my dad's foot tracks uh, in the snow and uh, try and make step for step, stride for stride. And my dad hunts a lot like, like I do now. Um, giddy up and go. If they're <laughs> over there, that's where we're going. We're not going to sit here and wait for them to come to us. And so mm. um, it was always that real fired up type of aggressive hunting. My dad was always successful and everybody's like, man, he's always successful. He always got something, you know, and I just thought that was the way you did it. So mm. that's kind of how I cut my teeth on elk hunting uh, particularly. Nice. And, um, obviously, you know, you hunted with your dad, you've kind of passed that along to Nate and now Nate hunts a lot like that. And so what has been, um, like your guys's first, like what was, what was Nate's first experience with hunting? Like when you guys were young and just kind of first getting into it. Yeah. I'll let Nate kind of tackle <laughs> that one because, uh, it was like, as far as just, yes, yeah, starting off hunting, um, you know, basically we, we didn't have we didn't have a lot of stuff we didn't have a lot of money we didn't have a lot of uh, luxuries and so we kind of just had to deal with uh, what we had and <laughs> we've got some we've got some earlier stories that were uh you know especially november uh, high mountains uh so there's going to be snow rain sleet cold nasty yeah. stuff and uh, i'll just kind of let nate your kids experience yeah i just i remember starting off hunting i mean younger before before the that that experience um i think my first memory is hiking through the woods elk hunting and stepping on a bee's nest <laughs> <laughs> that's probably my very first hunting memory i'm sure there's more before that but that's the first one i can remember mm-hmm. that was that was not fun um <laughs> but it was fun but, not yeah, stepping on a bee's nest. Yeah. <laughs> well, even before even before that memory, I'm sure uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Nate was born in September and yeah. uh, had an October deer hunt, and so he was about a month old. And I took him on my backpack and went deer hunting <laughs> and uh, <laughs> shot shot a buck deer. Uh, he was asleep in the backpack. And, and from uh, what I heard, I never even woke up. So. Never even woke up. <laughs> Boom. I mean, this was a rifle. It wasn't an archery shot. You know, it's like, kaboom. And they were just sleeping right back. Okay, he's still good. <laughs> but actually, And that's yeah. when I got hooked. <laughs> <laughs> Been hooked ever since, man. That was so much fun. You didn't know you could just go to sleep. You could do. You could hunt in your sleep, man, still be successful. <laughs> yeah, whoever says hunting's not peaceful. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and I know, uh, you know, you guys have, obviously shared lots of stories, you know, because we all, we all work together. You've told me tons of stories about 
growing up and hunting and all that stuff. Um, but I do want to hear more about the you know, the story that Nate you shared with me earlier about when you were just kind of starting. You're just old enough to hunt and just kind of starting hunting. Sure, yeah, and uh, you know, like my dad said, not not a lot of money or equipment or anything nice, and uh, you know, technology even <laughs> when we first started hunting together was nowhere near what it is now. You know, you have those super ultra light negative 20 degree sleeping bags that wasn't even a thing back then right yeah, it was yeah. a, old flannel sleeping bags and perfect for summer <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> and we're out there in november i just remember setting up a tent in two feet of snow on the ground and just waking up sopping wet yeah. if you could even sleep yeah. i mean yeah you're just <laughs> Sleeping bags are just, you can wring them out. I mean, it's yeah. <laughs> just shaking and shivering. Like, I cannot wait to wake up and go hunting. <laughs> it's just miserable. And, uh, yeah, we did that for three miserable years. Uh, had a ton of fun. I mean, some of the fondest memories I have still are just freezing to death in that tent. <laughs> yeah. But the next day made it worth it and seeing lots of animals. And, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was quite the experience. So. I think there's something about hunting that there's a physical challenge and a mental challenge. And the people that really love to hunt really enjoy the physical and mental challenge of mm -hmm. it. Of yeah. you like when, you know, we were hunting the other day, coyote hunting in like, you know, two or like three foot of snow. There's it was really sucky or but it's also really awesome. Yes. It, and yeah. it's just that challenge of just pushing through you know and uh persevering yep, and yep. uh stepping on a bee's nest not fun at all <laughs> but there's something about the suffering that makes hunting so special yes yeah and absolutely. um I, I know verlin your 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 catchphrase is gritting it and grinding it because you do a lot of archery hunting over in idaho and Oof. yeah i mean i've i've hunted in oregon and i thought that was pretty steep and and gnarly in some parts and then some of the stories you've told me about idaho are just crazy just the yeah. steepness and, oh yeah and just big country you know yeah. different world yes it yeah. is yeah nate been there a couple times with me too yep. yeah it's it's brutal um and so what has been your guys's like what got you started because you, you talk, we've talked about rifle hunting we've talked about some other things um we really want to focus in on archery because we as as muzzleloaders.com we look at archery pretty similarly to mm -hmm. muzzle loading they're both short range there's a lot of muzzle loader seasons that are in the rut um so what kind of has what was the uh what got you into archery i suppose is the question well i think a lot of it was um obviously in wyoming again that's kind of where i got started archery hunting because my dad was not an archer um and so i did um, go out with my buddies hey you know here grab a bow and let's go archery hunting you know it's go out after school and you know it's, it, it was a lot like here in the grand you know you got the sierra madres and the and the rockies coming out of colorado into wyoming and that's right in that valley is where i lived and uh so it wasn't you know a matter of an hour you could be up and screaming bugling bulls mm -hmm. and uh that's that's addictive when you start getting into oh, into the elk that are just screaming and mm. coming in hot and yeah. tearing up stuff and you just get to that just that bird's eye view of just like man this is this is intense it changes the whole game because i mean i was i was always rifle hunting you know there he is across canyon shooting bang mm -hmm. you know it's done mm -hmm. you can walk over there and go get him <laughs> but this is all of a sudden it changed everything it's like wow i think i like this yeah <laughs> now and, you're playing uh, the game yeah now you're really playing the game and then uh, you know, over years of, of practicing bugling and all that kind of stuff and how to, and how to, what they're saying at certain times of the season. And it's a totally different, totally different game. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I liked it and, yeah. uh, never went back. And so you were using like a recurve oh, yeah. back then. Oh yeah. Right? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Started yeah. with a recurve? Oh yeah. yes. Yes. Oh, man. Yep. Yeah. My, my first couple <laughs> animals, with the recurve. Um, and then I finally got an old, uh, was a bear polar two, uh, compound bow with them little tiny wheels at the top and the cables. And, uh, man, we thought we were really, we were, really something. Oh man. All of a sudden <laughs> it just changed the game. It's just like that old fashioned stuff is out the window and I'm not going back. Cause this is, this is technology at its best. And then you look back now and look at, 
man, <laughs> that was a piece of junk. But you know, we're shooting, we're shooting uh, arrows the size of cigars, you know, out there, <laughs> just <laughs> blobbing them out there, just like man, what no a different releases, world. No releases, no sights, no, just all instinctive, yeah, instinctive fingers letting her letting her rip man it's just like yeah and uh of course antelope hunting in in wyoming was the thing that you always basically used as practice because it was just it's really five minutes from my house you go out and start antelope hunting you know with your bow and just you know we just let them fly and just my first antelope sorry to say but i would never do this now but <laughs> <laughs> i just there, i mean in wyoming you know the wind's blowing 90 to nothing all the time anyway and there's a buck and he was at the very end of this herd of does and i pulled up and shot and i mean it literally is you could see the arrow just going through the air like this wobbling back and forth and all the way down i mean it seemed like it took 15 seconds to get there you know and finally <laughs> quite and sure enough it got him and, and i that was my first antelope buck but with my bow i'm going man that was that was pure luck <laughs> but then i i we stepped it out there it was 120 yards oh, <laughs> with just this big old cigar going through the area you could just watch it just fly and just but uh yeah it's, but technology has definitely changed and it's changed the game a lot but um still just hunting in general like you say it's just it just does something for you. You know, guys, the camaraderie mm, is, yep. is most of it really. I mean, mm -hmm. and I do a lot of solo hunts that I really enjoy, uh, for elk. Um, it's, it's a, it's a solitude of you against the beast. You know, there's no mm -hmm. help. There's no outside energy helping you. You're just, it's again, going back to that mental game. How far can I go? How far, yeah. you know, and it's, the older I get and then looking back thinking I did some real dangerous stuff that, you know, as a, as a kid or even in my thirties, um, never even thought about, you know, it's just like, I'm invincible. Here we go. You know, <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> just jump into the game and, and go for it. Yeah. And it didn't matter where I went. It didn't, if the elk were bugling, that's where I'm going. Mm -hmm. And, uh, just do as a, as a, as a solo hunt. Um, it really, makes you dig deep and uh it gets down in there but um the camaraderie of just being with the guys that you just really enjoy and i i love hunting with nate and he uh you know cut his teeth on my on my boot prints like i did my mm -hmm. dad you know yeah. and he just kind of um followed along and just so basically he hunts just like i do because that's how he that's how he learned mm -hmm. and uh we just we have a lot of fun together. Oh yeah, uh, we just enjoy we do, we enjoy each other's company. I mean, we're best friends. I mean, yeah. we just yeah. we do things more than just hunt. I think that's something that is worth noting is hunting is a good way to spend time with your family. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. and if you hunt with your family, there's something about shared experiences when hunting. You know, it'll build any relationship. But when you have shared experiences uh, with your family, those are bonds that aren't, you know, they aren't easily broken. And so, you know, it's, it's definitely tons of fun to hunt. I, I hunted with my dad growing up and there's just something about that that just really strengthens a relationship. Um, mm -hmm. you know, cause if you, there's also something about suffering and there's definitely a lot of suffering in hunting Oh yeah, and that suffering creates strong bonds between people. And so hunting is, is definitely like that. And you were talking about how, uh, you know, you didn't let anything get in your way. I know you've told me lots of stories of breaking your fingers and putting them back together and still <laughs> hunting and, and stuff like that. So that's part of it. Yeah. <laughs> all those, all those stories, how to probably field, field medical stuff will be another podcast. Or two, but <laughs> that's how to suture yourself. But should do. Yeah. 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 I, I do carry a suture kit, but that's, and that, I've, and I've that had to use used. it. <laughs> I have used it. I don't use them twice though. That's I usually true. just get another one. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah, it's tough. I mean, hunting is brutal. I mean, it'll if you're hitting it hard, it'll it'll be hard on you back. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I guess one story I really did want to talk about is there's a a picture on the wall out there of you and your friend Tim who shot a a four twelve class bull, and so I kind of wanted to get some of that story because that's just a monstrosity of a bull. Well, I think and, really to tell that story, sorry not to cut you off, sure. but that to really tell that story correctly, it starts the year before they shot that bull. Yeah, the year is, you were with Yeah, us. when we found that spot. Oh, really? It was just, yeah. oh, 
that that story <laughs> still gets the hair on the back of my neck. You know, Do tell. Yeah, yeah, I haven't heard yeah, that story. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think you've probably ever told the, the yeah, pre-story. So we the were, pre-story uh, yeah. yeah, we were just driving down that road, kind of doing what we always do, just bugling every few miles, you know, or a mile here, mile there. You, you can be driving right down the road, bugle out the window, and they don't know you're driving. They'll bugle back at you, and then you hop out of the truck and chase them down. That's you know, mm. <laughs> that's, that's one method, you know, if you're kind of heading out like we were and looking for new spots. And we just heard this bugle halfway up this ginormous Idaho mountain, you know, <laughs> looking at it like, oh. Just it's, straight it's, up. Yeah, it's about, it's about a three, th- I think it's about 3,000 foot vertical climb oh, to get to the top of that. I mean, it's like climbing a whole mountain yeah. just to get and it's steep just to get steep. there I mean, oh yeah I, I remember times when i was feet and hands crawling yeah. up the mountain yep. Jeez. Yep. and so we chased this bugle all the way up the stinking mountain to the very top of this the, the and toppy ended up tip not being the same one anyway yeah. we lost the one that yeah. was bugling originally we, all, yeah, we he, just thought well we've never been to the top here let's yeah. just keep going yeah, he kind of mm-hmm. ghosted us and went left but we we're like hey we're on a hunt just keep gritting it and grinding it. Yeah. <laughs> and you couldn't just walk straight up because you'd, we, you'd cliff out. And everybody knows who if you've been hunting in steep country, you know how it is to cliff out. All of a sudden, you just get there. It's, it's impossible to go. So you have to kind of shimmy across the edge and ledge and then mm-hmm. find a chute that kind of goes up. And, okay, now don't get behind me because there's going to be rocks and stuff falling, you know. So you wait for that guy to get up. and Mountain goat stuff. You know, catch him if he, if he falls down <laughs> because yeah. you literally do just – sliding back oh no what do i do mm-hmm. so anyway go ahead <laughs> yeah so we uh you know i mean that's the best stories are told like this you know we fill each other's blank spots yeah. in. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> so uh, and the we, older you get the more blank spots you have <laughs> <laughs> take it nate take it <laughs> yeah so we uh we get to the top and yeah, it was you know, right at noon too it, it took us all day to and get a lot of there. times you know it's about uh different people making different sounds elk respond to different bugles you know um they like something that they heard that somebody else didn't have and so i just remember the three of us just up there oh you bugle now okay i'll bugle a couple times okay you bugle and then i bugled and this bull bugled back and for some reason every time i bugled he liked what i had to say and (laughs) every time i bugled he'd bugle back so we did that for a little bit, and we're like, oh, man, he's just right down here in this hole taking a lazy afternoon nap. It was, you know, what, 11, 12 o'clock? It was noon, yeah. Because yeah, we just, man, we had to get something to eat because we just got yeah. up there. We just got to the very tippy top, and we dropped our packs and everything. We're just sweating and saying, yeah. man, we got to get some food. And about that time, I just. No I, time for food. I had to uh, bugle, and this bull just bugled right back, and everybody's like, Get your stuff back in your backpack because we were out in the wide open. We had to get about a hundred yards down there before we got into the into the trees to where we had some cover. Yeah, so we uh, threw all our stuffs back back on our backs and uh, you know just drenching in sweat. I mean, I just remember my shirt. Yeah. I kind of took yeah. it off and just wringed it out from crawling up that mountain. And uh, we just jump right down in the tree line as fast as we can. You know, trying not to be seen. He doesn't sound like he's really doing much. Just. Like I said, lazy afternoon bulls usually are just kind of respond back to you and yeah, break a tree. From their and, yeah, yeah, just laying there. So we're too worried about getting seen. So we got down in there, and um, you know, we it's always that decision: like who's going to go up there and and shoot this bull? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and my me, dad's usually pretty selfless. You know, he he always wants to see other people collar. succeed. So. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it's his his passion to see people succeed. Uh, yeah, always very selfless. So, <laughs> um, so he's like, "I'll you know, I'll call you guys. Go ahead and go up there." Had he seen the bull first, he might have changed his mind. <laughs> <laughs> Get behind me! <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he's back there just raking a tree. You know, uh, he tried a few different things and nothing really worked until he started raking a tree and that, well, that, that seemed that, to get him going. That wallow is when I started splashing oh, yeah, that wallow. That's, right. that's what wallow. really fired mm-hmm. him up. So Tim and I uh, decide to sneak up closer, and we're just picking through these trees, trying not to get seen. And uh, I finally lose track of where Tim's at because I see some a tree moving. Uh, my from my view, I can see them both. There, I can see Tim and Nate off to my right and left, and I can, and I can see this whole thing happening. Yeah, and I'm yeah, getting a feel cool. for the bull of how this happened. I'm going, oh man, this is gonna work. That's He's actually that. coming arm hair starts to stand up and you're like oh <laughs> <laughs> it's when it gets exciting getting close closing the distance man that is oh yeah mm-hmm. 
it gets you going. Yeah. And, uh, so I just break off left and I don't know what Tim's doing. And, and, uh, I finally get to see this bull. And I mean, he's, you know, every bit of this, yeah, he's bigger than that. <laughs> <laughs> a lot, a lot bigger than that. Heavy and, head. uh, I'm just like, Oh man, this is going to happen. Mm-hmm. This is, I, I can see it in my mind. And so I'm just picking through as slow as I can. Cause they're very alert when they're raking and looking up cause they're looking for that bull mm-hmm. coming in, you know? And so I'm just getting closer and closer and closer. I got no shot. There's this just wide opening in between me and the bull and uh, a tree line, just a skinny little tree line, you know, little trees to my right. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to pick through this this tree line on my right to get to this bull. And he's just kind of raking a tree, doing his thing and responding to my dad back there doing his thing <laughs> <laughs> and they're only about 50 yards from me so i can still yeah. see pretty much everything oh, going geez. on yeah, and at this point i'm only 50 yards from the bull but you know i consider a good ethical archery shot around 30 yards and plus i got no shot i mean it's head on he's head mm-hmm. straight at me raking the tree so i just think hey if i get to the end of this tree line i'll be 25 yards away from this bull and then i'll just wait for a shot to present itself So about the time I get halfway down this tree line, which isn't very far, you know, and I got to go slow Mm because he's looking up every once in a while and I just freeze in my, my tracks. And then he would go back to raking and just this enormous antlers just ripping this tree apart. It was amazing to see that close. You know, that's a a sight that not a lot of people get to see. And so uh, just about the time I get halfway down this tree line, he decides he's going to come to the wrong side of the tree line. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> like they do. Yeah. Like they do. Like they yeah, know. they always do the thing that you don't want them to do. And about that time, I've, I'm at one wallow, and there's another wallow right behind me. About that time, a five-point bull yeah, comes that's right. beside Nate, and it comes back beside me, and I'm going, oh, no, he's going to blow this thing. And he gets in the wallow right next to me. It's not 15 <laughs> yards, and he's just in there. I'm, oh, man, he's he's already doing all the stuff. All that to do is enjoy the show. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, he's this right bull's there. bull's literally doing yeah. the calling for us. Yeah. Really, you sound really good. You sound just <laughs> like <laughs> Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I've been practicing. I put on my costume and get in there. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I, he comes to my right. And so I'm like, okay, well, I'll just poke through this tiny little tree line. It's not that thick, you know. And so I pop through there. And it takes me like five minutes just to get to 10 steps because he's the bull's so alert right on the other side. Mm. I can see him walking, and he's obviously right behind some other trees right over here and i'm on this tree line he's only 20 yards away from me at this point but there's just nothing 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 then there's just this one giant tree and then it's wide open from there so i knock an arrow and get ready to draw back and i see him step behind the big tree that i'm like as soon as he steps on the other side of that big tree i'm sending this arrow and i draw back and his head comes out the other side of the tree but he keeps his vitals directly behind the giant tree and i'm just holding and holding and holding and i'm like come on please (laughs) and he obviously sensed something he didn't like Uh, i don't know what it was but just kind of slowly turned around and started walking away so i hustle down to the end of this tree line and uh draw back again as he's walking away from me at this point he's about 45 yards away from me still a a doable shot but i cow call and he's quartered away and i just didn't feel right about the shot not a bull that size i mean any bull really Mm -hmm. you don't and you don't want to make a bad shot and so i i chose to to let that bull be and and see if i could get another shot at him because i just did not feel good about that shot and i don't feel good about the shot i'm not taking it Mm -hmm. i'm not if there's not a 99 percent chance that I can make an ethical shot. I, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, that was, that was it. I mean, he was a, a monster and, and we're still not sure if it was the same bull that you got the following year or his brother or Yeah, what. we're pretty sure it was the same bull because mm. he's, he'd been up there. Um, when we saw that bull and another bull that was even bigger than him, um, that, uh, he disappeared too after we shot that one in 2016 um there was another bull with 
in that same canyon that was just enormous and he had big old sweeping backs like just like nothing we'd ever seen and uh but at that at that time when nate drew back that first time tim drew back at the same time and they, they were both like oh this is gonna happen this is gonna happen this is gonna happen this is that and neither one of them let anything fly and the thing just turned around and walked off and he didn't come in like he was like wanting to fight anything I think he knew he was kind of the biggest bull around and he had nothing to really worry about. He just wanted to come see who was in his, yeah, see yeah. who was in his bedroom and say, Hey, mm. you know, because he didn't come charging in. He yeah. just come walking in. He'd be, and even when he left, he just bugled all the way back yeah, to his cows. Walked, didn't run. He didn't, he didn't go anywhere. He didn't, no. he wasn't scared off or anything. You just mm. want to make sure who was, who was around. Cause I think he kind of knew he was kind of the captain mm-hmm. of the, of the mountain. So and we he tried was, to go after him, you know, and then yeah, just kept we ended up away. calling that five point back in. And I, I was in the middle of a meadow and I just like crouched <laughs> down <laughs> real slow. And this, this five point just come from me to that light right there, you know, five yards away uh-huh. and just, and then walked right past my dad again. <laughs> just, I mean, that, that thing really wanted us to, to shoot him. And it was Three other five points we got yeah, into up least. there. Man, it was a that busy was a day. Busy day, yeah. Oh yeah, I could have shot another five point at point blank range too later on that day in the same yeah. same area. Yeah, just down the canyon, trying to find a way to get back off that mountain because it was going to get dark and there's no way we're going to go back down the same way we came up because it was just too dangerous. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, man, we ended up. Oh, that was a miserable long. Yeah long miserable day i don't know what time we got out probably two o'clock in the morning or something it was dark 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 yeah. dark. it was dark 30 <laughs> yeah. it's almost light the next day yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Been there. oh man yeah it's kind of like they say it was kind of like labor pains you just uh, uh, i never want to do this again and then the next time it's just like oh we're gonna have another baby you know, we're gonna, we're gonna go out again you know <laughs> let's do it again yeah <laughs> that's what they say about labor pain i wouldn't know but <laughs> Awesome. Well, let's go ahead and take a quick break. Um, we'll be back. I got to grab a drink real fast, <laughs> and then we will come back. I have a couple stories I want to get from uh, from Nate and from Verlin, and so stay tuned. We'll be right back. All right. Thanks for bearing with us. Um, we are back into it with Nate and Verlin, and we're going to be talking about uh, more stories. We got more stories. We are just talking about some other stories over the break. And uh, Nate, I want you to go ahead and talk about, um, you know, we were just talking about close range and you know, how you passed on that five point at point blank. And I know there's a story of a bull that you killed really close range. So I wanted you to tell that story too. Sure. Yeah. I mean, that, oh man, that was, that is probably one of the most beautiful places. And that particular year, especially. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We had just been, hunting in a spot that we've hunted a million times and uh didn't we just ended up in this spot that we'd never been to hmm. like you could hunt in a place for a long time and and just miss little you know just take <laughs> just go up the wrong yeah. canyon yeah and yeah. end up somewhere completely different well we usually follow in the bugles anyway you know mm-hmm. so it's kind of like, well it's just going that way and it's, so it's we've never really investigated over there because it's all the bugles usually didn't come from that but it was so far away too i don't think we could have heard yeah because it's over another canyon so yeah. it's just like we just never yeah if you're not right in that canyon too you're yeah. not gonna no, hear anything no, no the sound just yeah sucks it's right a big bowl too it's, it's yeah cool. it's a huge bowl there's a little waterfall coming off the oh, it's just it's a really cool place anyway um to the elk story <laughs> <laughs> we gotta set the mood yeah you know? that's right that's right that's right it's set like the Bob tone. Ross painting you gotta that's like right. just paint uh-huh. the whole scenery just a little tree here a little <laughs> friendly tree <here. laughs> so anyway we end up in this bowl that we'd never been before and we're doing the thing we always do you know just hey let's see what's in here hello only it's a bugle <laughs> it's an elk hello and uh you know we get this response down there and we're like oh okay this is this is this is good you know we can do this and get our binoculars out and glass a little bit and how do you see the cows it's first a bunch yeah, of cows bunch on the cows upper side, on the yeah. upper side. We're like okay how are we gonna get down in here it's relatively open um, there's patches of trees here and there. And, and now that we know it a lot better, we found that there's some really dense trees a little bit lower, but we came in way up on the top and it's just wide open everywhere. And so we're watching these cows and, and, uh, 
kind of planning our attack because we can't get down there without being seen. Mm -hmm. So we wait for the cows to kind of go bed down in some some trees on the other side. Again, still relatively open where they can see us. But we're like, hey, we're, we got to get down there and make something happen. It's mm -hmm. it's a good half a mile, three quarters of a mile across the canyon. Mm -hmm. I mean, straight across. Yeah, I've actually got some pretty good video footage of that hunt too. Um, but yeah, we dropped down in there and. Uh, but well, we saw that we saw the bull finally because we didn't see the bull. We could hear him, but we mm -hmm. never could we never put eyes on him. And then we saw him, and he was digging out of bed over there. Yeah, hmm. yeah. And that's, that's why right. we thought, well, he's not coming over. We need to go to him. Yeah. So we start going down there and get straight across from him. That's when I got the video footage, which isn't very good because it's on my phone. But <laughs> <laughs> it, it got foot, some footage is better than no footage. I sure. Guess. Yeah. And so we just kind of talk about how we're going to make this happen. And we're just like, well, wouldn't they spot and stalk him in his bed, I guess. We know right where he is. If there's that rock right there, if we can go all the way down here through this nasty, thick, marshy area where the creek goes down. And it's just straight down a scree slope to get down there, too, and up the other side. And how do you get down a scree slope without making a ton of noise, you know? Mm -hmm. Well... If you're elk hunting, I guess you don't. <laughs> you try, try to sound like an elk and make as much noise as possible. Um, so we get across this scree slope and, and up the other side through the, the thick, nasty. And uh, you did that I feel like this story is dropping. a week before I actually killed the bull, isn't it? Uh -uh. Oh, it was no. the same day. Okay. Yeah. 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 See, yeah. Fill, in, see, fill, in, yeah. fill in the holes. <laughs> no. <laughs> fill in the so, so we go through just this thick, nasty stuff. It just smells like elk everywhere. I mean, it is rank in there in a good way. A <laughs> good rank. Yeah. And uh, we get up to where we think, you know, and just really slow, methodically hike up this hill because at this point we're spot and stalking. We're not really calling because he's in his bed. And we get to where we think we need to pop over. We're like, yeah, this is the rock, right? And but we thought he was going to be right. Yeah, he should he should be just down the hill, fifty yards, right over this rock cropping. That's that's it. This is it. So we're sneaking yeah. up to this this <laughs> this rock outcropping. Because we see the bed. Mm -hmm. Oh no, he left. <laughs> it's gone. It's gone. Oh man, he did hear us or something. <laughs> so we bugle, <laughs> like, oh, maybe we can locate him. <laughs> <laughs> We were at the wrong scream at him, and he's, you know, another hundred yards yeah. below us, jumps out of his bed like, whoa, I didn't know you guys were there. Scared the crap out of me. And he just takes off like, oh, we were well, at the wrong, ruin that. Yeah, we were at the, we just, we were one rock outcropping too, too, too high. high yeah. And did the next oh, one. Geez. But there was a bed right there. Oh, that was, because yeah. I mean, it was yeah. all dug out. Yeah, if we'd have oh, come in him. just one lower, man, we'd have been right above him. We could have shot him right in his bed. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how it works. Everything you know, you're always on the looks other different side. when you get yeah. over there. Yeah. 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 On the other side, looking over, you're like, oh, that's it. And then you get over there and you're like, oh. Is I have the rock or is that the rock? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that one rock over there. It's yeah. kind of like that one tree, you know, you turn by that tree over yep. there. <laughs> exactly. So, so off the hunt goes. Yeah, we're like, oh, man, that's that's done. We take a break for a little while, and then he's still bugling over yeah, there. We get to his bed what? and bugling. He's still interested? Yeah, I thought we scared him so bad he didn't want to come back. So we're like, all right, well, if they're bugling, we're going. Yeah. <laughs> Regardless. So we go back down the scree slope and over to the other side of the canyon where we already were. And, uh, you know, at this point, we get into some dense, some denser trees. And we actually ended up calling him in once. He came right into me, but I didn't. Oh, that's right. That's the invisible arrow shot. Yes. Oh, man, I forgot I, all about that. I was going to say, are you on the story here? <laughs> yeah, let me yeah, fill you yeah, in how yeah, this yeah. went. <laughs> so so my dad's to my right. It's like coming together now as, as I'm telling the story. Now know? I'm doing the calling. Yeah, he's doing the calling to my right. And I'm just sneaking in on this bull um, because if he doesn't know that I'm there, you know, I can get in between the caller and the elk. And that's an ideal situation. Now I can see everything because I've got the bird's eye view. I'm on top. But you couldn't never see the bull, right? I, I saw the bull me. coming up. I couldn't oh. see if when you ended up taking the shot. I could see you the whole time. I could tell by your by your poise what was happening oh, because right. I could yeah. see you, <gasps> you freeze Froze. up and then you just get ready to draw and stop and turn and yeah. position your body. And go, oh, this is going to happen. He's 
that yeah. bull's right there. Otherwise, he wouldn't be poisoned, you know, to to get the shot off. So. Yeah, so this bull's just right in front of me, and, and I'm watching him. He's a good him. bull. Yeah, really good bull. <laughs> he's a really good yeah. bull. Yeah, probably one of the bigger ones I've had an opportunity to yes. shoot at. Yes, yeah. By far. And uh, I'm just watching like him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like that. 340 class. And so I'm just watching him. And he's just, he's being real cautious. You know, late afternoon bulls are usually pretty cautious anyway. They're kind of lazy and tired and not really in the mood to fight. So mm-hmm. he's just coming to investigate. And I get down in this little ditch and I'm just watching him. And I go, okay, if he goes right, I've got a shot. If he goes left, I've got no shot. I, I'm going to have to favor the side that I know I'm going to have a shot on. So I come up and just kind of crouch next to this tiny tree that's no bigger than I am. Just a little spindly guy. And uh, he starts going left. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> and, uh, and then he changes his mind all of a sudden for no reason whatsoever. I'm like, okay, that tree right there is 40 yards. I know it. Like, you know, we spend a lot of time practicing shooting without ranging just so that when we're Stump out there, shooting. yeah, when we're out there and we actually have a shot at a bull, we're confident in our yardage. And, uh, so he comes right to the tree that I pinpointed at 40 yards and I cow call and he stops and it's just broadside. And I'm like, this is my bull. Mm-hmm. And I let an arrow fly, holding 40 dead on him. Never felt so sure about a shot in my life. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm 40 <laughs> yards behind Nate. Yeah. And I, I mean, I can, I can hear everything. I can see everything. I hear the shot go off. It sounded like it just shot straight up in the air. I mean, there was mm-hmm. no, no glancing off, no thump, no thud, no nothing. I just like. That's why we call this story the ghost arrow. <laughs> and I, so after the bull leaves, I'm like, okay, I just want to make sure I pull out my range finder. That tree is 40 yards. He was standing right in front of the tree, which makes him probably 35 yards. And I put my 40 yard pin right on him. That should have been the perfect shot. Mm-hmm. Like, All right, sweet. I didn't hear him fall over. And though. I see, the, I see, the, <laughs> I see the bull go through about three different openings, off, mm-hmm. and he's just gathering up cows and going. I'm just going, not acting like he's going to tip over anytime <laughs> soon. <laughs> so I go look for my arrow. We look for blood. We and never find anything. Hmm. Nothing. No arrow. And no blood. And no. Where where he shot too? It, it banks like this, so the arrow would have hit yeah. the bank straight huh. behind. Straight, and it's soft ground. Not a lot of weeds and stuff. It's just like their arrow was not there. I thought, oh, man, it's in that bowl somewhere. And I'm the arrow finding. Yeah, we stay there. Like, I, yeah, find, find, I find the arrows. Well, when they're $10 a piece, you <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. find them. <laughs> 10 one. What, well, $10, $10 like arrow. 10 years 10. ago, they were $10 a piece. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> 20 now. Yeah. And a $10 broadhead. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's yeah. true. Yeah. yeah, you got broadheads and all that. Yeah, yeah. 30 bucks. You better, yeah. you better freaking find those arrows. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, we never found the arrow, never found a speck of blood. So positive that we, I didn't hit the bull at that point because we tracked him for a long, long time and never, you yeah. know, you'll find a, at least a speck and yeah. there was nothing. And there's lots of down, dead gray wood there was no we followed his tracks all over the place and there was never any hmm. so i know this is a long story to get to the story that you wanted to hear <laughs> <laughs> but this is how it started yeah, yeah. this is the day and uh, so we uh we end up going down this is not the day but this is how we found the spot yeah this is mm. how because i had spot. to leave after that and you stayed up there and found that bull the next day and saw him bugling on the other that's side that's right that's to right. make a long story shorter so <laughs> to make a long story longer so we can get to the real good yeah. stuff so, so then, then I, we decide to come back. Yeah. The the following weekend or Yeah. Uh, no, it was it was uh Monday. Oh right. Because I, I went home Sunday, went to church, mm-hmm. came back and met you back up at camp. Yeah, we found some really and good so we ground were, down there and we we're like, Oh we're, man, we need to come back here. Mm-hmm. We're back back we're back country camping back there, so that's all oh, that's in, right. Yeah. So yeah. we packed all of our stuff in there. Yes. To, to to hunt this one spot because it just looked really, really and good. And there's lots of bulls. And we saw, what, yeah. four six-point bulls in there mm-hmm. in a day, one yeah. day? Yeah. yeah. And then stuff we didn't see, we're bugling coming up from the bottom. It was like, <sighs> man, we found the spot. Mm. Not another person. <laughs> yeah, nobody. nobody. was bugling up there at us on a weekend. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, it couldn't have been more perfect. So we decided to set up camp up there and packed all of our stuff in there doing some backcountry was it four miles to the camp spot? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Well, we camped way up on top. Remember, Mm -hmm. moved all the camp all the way over to the other canyon, dude. So, So, yeah, we pack all of our all of our gear in there, and and we're like, "All right, this is the spot. This is this is where it's going to happen." So we go in the next day, and uh, I mean, it happens almost immediately. We get right into the the good stuff after seeing that weird duck at four feet away. That was the weirdest thing. Just a weird mud duck mud in the duck. middle of nowhere. <laughs> in the mountains. In the so mountains. Walking. Weird walking. Weird. Yeah, not even flying. Like, oh. he, he was four feet away from me, just walking in the walking brush. Walking in the brush. <laughs> <laughs> One of the weirdest things I've seen in the woods. <laughs> Spend enough time out there, you'll just see it. Fall out of the sky and just decide, hey, I like this better than the, than <laughs> the, the water. Than I don't know. <laughs> kind of weird. So, anyway, mud duck. <laughs> and then we, we, uh, you know, start getting in on this, this bugle and bowl. And I mean, it couldn't have happened more picture perfect, like a, a movie. We just get right in on him and he's bugling st- straight up the hill from us. And my dad's like, all right, I'm going to get in this little uh, regen patch and start rubbing this tree. So he starts raking the tree and I start walking up there. And I mean, I get what, 50 yards 50 away from yards you. Ahead of me. And there's this me. big, big tree. And I stand right in front of it because you usually need some, you know, some sort of cover. Yeah. You don't want to stand behind it because then you don't have a shot. So at least that gives me a backing that I blend in with. Mm-hmm. So I put my arm, just my right arm, just around the, the tree to where I can draw around the tree, you know, and, and that like puts my back of my arm up against the tree. And no sooner do I get to this tree and this bull just comes he is hot, man. Just <laughs> comes. He wouldn't quit screaming. Yeah. Just scream, 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 scream. Just then. bugling like crazy. As as he straight between you and me, or I was below you. Mm-hmm. Soon as he was above you, straight but straight uphill. That's when I started I, doing it so I could get him to come yeah, straight down. Yeah. And, man, I turned it on, and he did too. Yeah, he <laughs> came in so stinking fast I didn't even have time to think. <laughs> I mean, he's just – and he's coming straight at me. Mm. Straight. Dead run. Dead, dead downhill. run. Downhill. Yeah, downhill. And, I mean, I've got no shot. I've got my bow poised and ready to draw, but he's just giving me his nose. I mean, I don't have a chest shot, nothing. His head's down, and he just comes straight at me. And so finally I'm like, okay, I got to draw and wait for my shot. I guess I draw back and this bull, I mean, he just keeps walking, 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 walking. He gets right to me and stops. I mean, his, his nose is six inches away from my broad head and he just goes (sighs) and just breathes in my, (laughs) my smell. And I'm, I'm staring this bull in the eyes at, you know, arms length away and he, spins because he smells me and i let it fly right into him because i mean i'm point blank it's just (laughs) probably (laughs) it probably wasn't the best decision but i it was instinct like he's point blank in front of me he spins and i let it fly (laughs) and uh he takes off and and we we tracked him for a while and and watched him in his bed i got real good footage of that one even though it's on my phone i'm i got it zoomed in and i'm just have it at him sitting in his his bed, you know, doing his his uh, sickly thing before he dies. And, yeah. Uh, we kind of knew that the shot was a little far back because he'd spun so fast, even though it was point blank. We're mm-hmm. like, all right, we're gonna have to get another another shot at this bull. So we watch him for a little bit, and my dad tries to circle around underneath, and while I try to sneak in and get a shot from from where I'm at. Unfortunately, he was straight away from you in a sleeping position. So it was like you had. And I had one little shot that I could have made had he got up and stood just perfectly, but Mm -hmm. he didn't. He got up and, of course, started (laughs) walking away. (laughs) So I I just keep following him and I'm right behind him the whole time. And he's sick enough. He's not just. He's not running. He's just wanting to lay down. Yeah. And he keeps tripping. And so we know, okay, this is like, we're going to make this happen. And, uh, he just jumps over this huge tree and falls over and I mean, just crashing through the woods, pretty easy to track. Yeah. And I finally get to a point where I know he's right above me somewhere. I can hear him kind of stepping and breaking some, some sticks and, uh, I'm just being real cautious. And I, I finally look up and he's standing right there, just broadside, you know, 30 yards away from me. And I draw back and bam, make one more shot. And I just know it's a perfect, 
double lung shot, you know, I'm, I could see the arrow goes through and I, he just jumps right over the hillside and crashes over and woohoo! <laughs> we celebrate. <laughs> Man, yeah. Yeah. It's always one of my favorite stories. Um, and you, cause you never, you never realize how close you get, you know, you get close encounters in, in the rut, but especially with archery and muzzle loading. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, I mean, that's, that's the excitement. It's a chess match, you know, with, I've obviously you guys have been hunting much longer than I've even been alive. Um, but the, the experience that I do have is with rifle, you're looking, you're hunting, you're trying to find groups of animals so you can take a shot on one with, you know, close range with muzzle loading and archery. It's like a chess match. It's your intelligence versus the elk's intelligence. Yeah, and it's absolutely. trying to find a way that, how can I get as close as possible? I mean, you're talking 30 yards, you know, that's close. That's like, that's right there. And let alone, you know, six inches away from your outstretched arm. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's a whole nother level. But I mean, those are the kinds of things that are really appealing about, um, about muzzle loading is you're able to, uh, get that, those close encounters, that excitement, you know, and it's always exciting to harvest an animal no matter what you're doing. But that is the, I mean, that's what people are after. Oh, that's yeah. that's yeah. what is addicting. Yes. Yep. Yep. You know, <laughs> for sure. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's, what's super exciting about all that. Well, uh, we really appreciate you guys joining us today. Lots of fun telling stories. Um, we did not even get close to <laughs> digging into all the stories. Like this is just like an inch deep of water um, of all the stories that they've even told me. And that's not even all of them. Uh, so if you guys want to hear more, if you want a part two of elk hunting stories, let us know in the comments and uh, we would love to do that for you. So um, thanks again for watching. Really appreciate you guys' support on the podcast, and uh, we will talk to you next time. Remember, shoot straight, shoot often, and have a blessed week, everybody.